Good morning. Happy Monday. Good, good morning. Happy Monday to you. How was your so week? Nice to see you. It's I nice. had a great weekend. What did you tell me about it? Well, we uh, have a nice first time buyer couple that bought a condo this weekend. And uh, I helped somebody who is moving from Dallas, Texas to Chicago look. So we were out and about this weekend in the cold weather. What so brings, I saw some really great properties. What brings them to Chicago? Job change. Okay. Job change. Yeah. I love hearing people coming into town. I want to thank all of them for choosing us. That's right. But it, you know what? And it, he's starting to see what a great city we live in. So it's always fun to show Chicago to people. I yep. really, really enjoy it. How about you? How was your weekend? Um, well, it was our sort of last weekend of... You know, Non-stay-at-home advisory? Is that where you were going? So um, I helped a couple who are thinking of downsizing to a bigger house. Nice. Yeah, exactly. So it's a change of life, and they've decided they, they need to <laughs> go big. Space. And I helped somebody uh, come up with an offer for a really cute um, two-bedroom, two-bath up in Ravenswood. Nice. Yeah. yeah. It was cold. I think we need to settle in and get used to the fact that we're going to have some cold weather for showings. So anyhow. Well, I ate outside on Friday night when it was cold and I wore, um, I'm going to be oh. embarrassed today, I really overdressed considering they had heat lamps. And so I had to undress. <laughs> but it was, so oh, I gotta tell you, I'm going to, I'm going to try continuing eating outdoors. Yeah. That's the portal. Yeah. Well, and everybody remember, real estate's a necessary activity, so uh, please don't put your plans on hold. We're happy to help in a safe way. Uh, this morning, uh, we are going to talk about assessing value in condominiums, and we've got some great examples to show you. But first, I'd like to share screen and show you what's happening in uh, the Near North neighborhood, which includes Gold Coast, Lincoln Park, can you see my screen there? Sure can. Whoops. Okay. Of course, and then I had it all ready to go and now it's bad. Okay. So by near north, as you all know, we're talking about this neighborhood here, just north of the loop. It includes Streeterville, River North, and the Gold Coast neighborhoods. I wanted to show you average price per square foot, which initially looks scary when you look at the uh, three years, but when you look at it over time, it doesn't look so bad because prices have gone up. Can we drop the um, Ann Rossi, Kyle Harvey, Shy bottom? Because I we can't sort yes. of can't see. Thank you for doing that. I will definitely hold on. Ba, 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 ba. There we go. Oh, thank you. Okay, so this is number of closed sales, and I thought this was a fun chart to show you because in October which is right here, actually, forget the number, it's right here. There were 176 closed condominiums. Now these are condominiums only in the near North neighborhood, 176. October of last year, 184. October of the year before, 170. And October of the year before that, 195. So you see this chart all over the board, but October to October to October, we're not really that far off. No. However, Wow. Look at our inventory. Yeah. Yeah. We have, gosh, almost twice the inventory we had in October of three years ago. Again, people those are thinking they- Those were terribly low years, though. Remember, those were- Absolutely. low years. Absolutely. Um, but let's go back. Um, we yeah. had a traumatic 2020. Yes. And um, I wonder if a lot of these- um, that are on the market now are in reaction to a very traumatic 2020 and whether they will go down or be processed. I don't know the answer, but right. this is a, this is a, a number that has, that's always going to have an asterisk by it. Yeah. Oh, right. Exactly. Right. It's, it's like the baseball players in the hall of fame who took steroids, right? They're always yeah. going to have the asterisk. <laughs> <laughs> this will be the 2020 year. Precisely. So, yeah. So 2,158 active listings that are condominiums on the market today in that neighborhood compared to 1,185, 1,311, and 1,417. High number. But okay, so I want to show you, I mentioned earlier price per square foot. 
the current price per square foot for October is $387 for a condominium in the near North neighborhood. And you, we just showed you this part of the graph, which shows the last three years. But I'd like to remind our friends that in 2011 and 2012, we saw the adjustment from the 2008 crash. And that's when prices hit their bottom. But look how they came back. They surpassed the numbers from before. And we're still higher than those numbers. And, I, and I'd like to add for the, the hump, the big hump, because other, uh, but for the past 2018, 2019, um, it, they've been pretty stable high. Yes. Um, but those are years when we've had a number of very expensive buildings um, go for sale that have um, really jacked up the price. I'm thinking Nine Walton, Eleven Walton, a whole bunch of buildings were built that um, have much higher price per square foot. And so that may account for um, this blip. Um, That's a very good point, Kyle. Absolutely. And of course, the other thing is, as you had mentioned just recently, we didn't have enough inventory. Yeah. So we didn't have enough inventory. So there was pressure on pricing. We had good interest rates, which was pressure on pricing. And we had big uh, luxury buildings coming in the market. So that's what drove these prices up, particularly in the yeah. last two years. Um, and so as much as you see this come down, this those is a still a good sold. number. Yeah, those buildings have sold and, and are, are not on the market anymore. Yeah. Exactly right. So that's it. That's my update on the Near North. And today we're talking about Near North. And so I thought that might make sense to yeah. kind of talk about condominiums. So, and, and just to preview what we're going to talk about about Near North is there are a number of iconic buildings that were the so among the most expensive buildings in the city. Um, when they were built and then when and then for decades afterwards and now have some bargains. So we thought we'd talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. And <clears throat> to put it in context, when you're looking at a building, how do you know what the right value for that condominium is? So that's what we're going to talk about now. Um, so let's should we jump in, Kyle? You want to yep. start? Yeah. So. Um, so uh, what we wanted to talk about is um, when we, because we stay on top of the market, we've observed a number of these iconic buildings um, drop their prices, especially in the um, near North neighborhood. Um, and they become, you know, sort of astonishingly good values. Um, we thought we'd talk about today how you evaluate um, condo prices in big buildings and in particular in these luxury buildings, it looks like they're great deals. Are they great deals? Um, and, um, or are they not? So we thought we'd go through some of the things you think about. Whether you're a buyer or seller, the focus needs to be on price per for the value. And here's how we look. So, and <clears throat> so on how quick, quick uh, recap on what an appraiser is going to do, which is different than what a buyer does. An appraiser is going to look at last six months within a half a mile and appraisers must use at least one condominium comparable from the building. So that's something to keep in mind uh, as you're looking. Um, but we're, I mean, that's what, that's what the appraiser does when you're getting your loan. But what we want to talk about today is what matters to you when you're thinking about buying uh, a condominium. So first of all, the first thing clients always tell us, right, Kyle, is monthly assessment. Yeah. Um, You're waiting for me to go out of you. <laughs> I, yeah, well, here's the thing, and, and especially today, um, especially the buyers that I'm working with today are saying, I want to, I want to load my monthly housing expense into the mortgage and not have it also comprise a large assessment. Um, and that's because I want to buy the most space. I want to buy the most real estate and not right. necessarily buy the amenities, which is what you get from the assessment. And so um, in looking at these buildings, you've, you've really got to look at um, what you get, the value of that assessment, and right whether it's reasonable, so. 
Right. So now some of these luxury buildings and when I, you know, whether it's 1440, which one might not consider luxury necessarily, but Carlisle, Thousand Plaza, they often have two door staff, you know, at like Water Tower and Meg Mile, same thing. During the day, they've got two on the door, one to let you in and one handling the inside. So those can be, you know, at a great expense. Uh, when you're looking at the assessment, you want to look how well the building is managed. Uh, are they spending their money wisely or frittering it away? What kind of amenities do they have an indoor pool? That could be expensive, particularly if you only have about 50 units sharing the price of that pool. And, um, you know, what kind of reserves do they have? So all of those are things that impact the assessment. And we see assessments on condominiums just say a two bedroom ranging anywhere from like $800 a month to $2,500 a month. And I'm not even speaking about co-ops where property taxes are included. No, but you, you actually hit the nail on the head that what will, um, there are two things that most impact the level of assessment, the number of staff per shift and the number of units to share the expenses across the building. Right. So we're going to be talking about two big buildings that have a lot of units to share a lot of expenses. Exactly right. The next thing to consider when you're looking at value is um, the view and the height in the condominium. So typically a condominium is built with tiers. So it'll be like the A tier or the O1 tier. They all have the same floor plan. They all face the same way. So when you're evaluating, it's very easy to compare versus another A or another O1. What's the difference? The floor height, the condition of the apartment. And in some cases, if you clear the building next to you, or if you're looking smack dab into it. You know, though, I, I know sometimes there are certain buildings, and I think this trend probably started in the 70s, where um, developers let people buy in early and then screwed up the tiers. So some floors on some buildings will have, you know, like they'll be the O1 one tier, but it'll be totally different because they let somebody buy raw space and then they built the rest of the floor around that space. And so that th you, you see one O oh, one and that that's X and the one right. that's like X times five. And you're like, what? And then you realize, well, it's actually three times the size of the, the other units because they right. let people buy in. And I'm thinking in particular, um, Olympia. Yeah. Park Hyatt building, water tower, very much the case at um, nine at one mag mile. The, a bunch of these buildings did that. The other buildings, for example, I don't think they did that at. Um, oh God, I, I'm blanking on the Carlisle. I think those are pretty much set tiers. It was developed at a time when they built the building tiers, and maybe people combined them later. But so there can be some level of trickiness, but generally not. Right. I think in large part, too, it depends on whether it was built as a condominium or built as a rental and then converted at one point, because that was a large part of our history as well. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been asked this question and uh, Kyle and I both know the answer and I'm going to share it now. When you buy in a condominium, the higher the floor level, the greater the price from when it was brand new and also the greater percent ownership. So don't be surprised if you buy a 25th floor unit and you have a higher percent ownership than if you bought a 15th floor of the same floor plan. I'm going to then, so I'm in violent agreement with you. But violent. violent. <laughs> okay. But we're gonna have one of my examples today does not bear that out. And I don't know how it no happened. No kidding. I know, but oh. wait till you get to it because it's sort of like, okay. what? But well, I that's think very interesting. I think it has to do with the view. There is one uh, new construction building going up right now where our company is the um, listing representative for the building. And every time you go up a floor, it's $35,000 more. And there is not a blocking building. It's just simply by floor level. So... Uh, that just gives you a sense in 
buildings and they're in the $2 million price range. That's why it's $35,000 more. If you get in smaller price ranges, it could be a thousand to $5,000 per floor. Um, and there's no set percentage. It's just kind of there. No, but so. you can use that when you are pricing or when you are um, making an offer. This is, you know, yes, right. you point to a sale on 27, but this unit's 11. And so I'm dropping the price significantly. You can't use the floor, um, the same tier 27 as a comp. So there, right. there are ways we can use that to that known um, value point. Exactly right. So then the final variable in deciding if a property has the value, a good value or not so good value is the condition of the apartment. And, you know, particularly Kyle, when we're looking at these iconic buildings, we're going to show that we're done like in the, the 80s. Uh, we're now looking at 35 years old on these buildings. And so the, if it, it's an original unit, it's showing its age. So the level that it takes to get it up to today's condition will also affect the value. And, and this, I completely agree. And a couple of things to that point, the, the construction materials and soundproofing of those materials are enough different that, um, for example, you don't have to have as low a ceiling to hide a can, a, a light can. So ceilings all of a sudden can go up higher. And that is, that is, uh, has an enormous effect on the way a, a home feels if the ceilings are higher. So right. all, the same unit can have much higher ceilings because it's been redone more recently. Um, and it doesn't matter how meticulous you've maintained your property, styles get old. And right. that, I had another one. Oh, it's become clear in the industry that a a kitchen or a design that is more than 10 years old is like a gut that a buyer will view that as something that needs to be gut rehab. Right. And it shocks me that it's it, that the turnover in um, materials and taste has been so dramatic that it, that 10 years, everything is outdated. But I just want us all to have that as a, um, you know, an expectation. So let's right. Keep. Okay. So do you want to start with your building or would you like me to start with mine? Let's start with yours. Okay. I am going to talk today about, whoops. The piece good. One Meg Mile. 950 North Michigan Avenue. This sits uh, at the corner of Oak and Michigan, and it is a multi-use building where it has retail on the first two levels, then commercial space, and then condominiums above. We're going to talk first about the 03 floor plan. This is what it looks like, and you can see we've got living room, dining room, and three bedrooms, and it's on the corner here. And this is what's happened in the building recently. There are currently 303s on the market that range in price from 739 to 1,150,000. And there are three solds that have closed in the 2020s for 750 to a million 25, excuse me. So why did they sell at different prices? Let's take a look. First, I want to show you the highest in recent memory of an 03. This is unit 5303. And it closed it. Sometimes I like to do price per square foot. It's just like a, a leveling point, if you will. Now, it this works to compare units in a building. However, I propose to you that it does not work when you compare building against building unless you're comparing value, uh, like what's a better building. So for example, you look at a nine Walton, it's not going to have the same price per square foot as a 950 Michigan, right? So based on how new it is, the amenities, so forth, uh, different buildings will have different average price per square foot. But okay, so 5303. Now, it's not like it's brand new, this unit. That's a general it's done. that it, it's um, of a different era. But it's a right. pretty building. But it's a pretty building, you know, kitchen here. But this was in 2018 uh -huh. and it closed for 523. So I just want you to remember 523 per square foot. 
okay? This is second bedroom. Now we're going to go to 4403. Wow. 442 per square foot. So what's the difference? Well, we're 11 floors lower or nine floors lower. You've got wood on a diagonal, passe. you got a kitchen. I don't think that was ever good. <laughs> the diagonal floors. Ever. That came and went very quickly, didn't it? I don't I don't recall it ever coming in, but I remember seeing it. <laughs> All right. So there you go. You okay. Now, 4103. So, three <laughs> floors lower. 296 a square foot it sold for. These are the original floors for that building. Yeah. Okay, but what a value. 296 per square foot for that building? Are you kidding me? I had to throw this in. This is virtual staging, so not in keeping with that building, but, you know, somebody's attempt to show you what you could do with it. Here's the kitchen. That's an original kitchen. I but I don't that. remember that being the original kitchen. Like, that's somebody. No. That in. That, that's like a, a Home Depot kitchen from the early 80s. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that something? Okay, bedroom, bathroom, original bathroom. But what a great frame for somebody to do something really wonderful. Well, that's it. Yeah. So so that just shows you what condition and floor level does to value. All right. Let's look at the 04. And here's the 04 floor plan. And uh, it's a two-bedroom. Here's what – or two or three floor. What am I doing here? Two or three floor bedroom. Anyway. I think some um, have been some are different. Yeah. yeah. But look at it. They're all in the 1830 to 1860 square yeah. foot range. So again, currently available 749, 920, and a million twenty-five. Recent sales. Look at these. All the sales have been in the 700s, which have been 380 to 404 per square foot. Still not the 296 that we just saw. But okay. So here's, and I'm just showing you two units at this point. Look at that. Looks Unit, like great. yeah, doesn't that look nice? 3304, 505 per square foot. So again, this is the high end of the range. Nicely done kitchen, but these kitchens are enclosed. And old, but but nice. Listen, I could cook in there. Okay, oh. I had to show you this one. Oh my. It's a, Three, co it, it's a cottage. It is a cottage. It's just a cottage in the sky. 2404, 388 per square foot. This closed in 18. I had to go back to 18 to show you one that sold like this. Uh, it's okay. A, it's an English cottage. Yes. In a modern building. With the pickled oak. Remember that? That was a, that was nice. For a That's while. what kind of, okay, this is the kitchen I had when I lived in your building, Kyle. <laughs> you know what? But you could, look at how simple those cabinets are. You could, you could reuse that. that Absolutely. Or yeah. just, and it would look great. Yeah. So it's not so, as awful as it appears. <laughs> there you go. So that's it. That is my, uh, but, but again, height and condition. I mean, you could be quite a difference between units and you know what some buyers will do is they will say, um, all right, what's it going to take me to bring this up to today's standards? In other words, what do I have to spend to get it to the 525 per square foot value, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what they're looking at as they go through and decide what they want to spend. Absolutely. Now, I approached um, my building, which is, um, we call it Water Tower. Um, it's, it's the apartment building in Water Tower Place. Uh, it's also known as 180 East Pearson Street. And it is, um, can you see it now? No. Oh, I haven't shared it. Apologies. There you go. Do you see it? Yes. Excellent. So this is the building. You'll recognize there's Michigan Avenue up ahead. This is Mies van der Rohe. Um, over here is the Museum of Contemporary Art. And there's a very pretty park in between. And uh, um, across the park is Chicago Avenue, just to orient yourselves in this. Um, so this is the kind of view you can get in the evening from some of these apartments, which is why Water Towers um, apartments are so um, I, uh, b beloved 
over time have been so expensive and over time have held their value so nicely. I mean, that's an example of a Southeast view. Um, so why is Water Tower iconic? It's 73 stories high. There are 260 homes in that building, and that will be important for um, determining assessments. The amenities are incredible for this building. Among other things, they are in the same building as the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, and you can get a, a membership in the very, um, very nice um, Carlton Club, uh, or you have in the past. I don't know if it still exists, but they also have an indoor pool. They've got a number of, of amenities exercise rooms, et cetera. Very nice. They also have a lot of service, um, meaning door people and engineers. Uh, they have, which is in freaking incredible, $30 million in reserves. Now, my assess, I live in a condo building. My assessment is comprised of the assessment, meaning what pays for the budget of the of the running of the building over the course of the year, the not the capital, but the actual running of the building. And then I pay a reserve funding fee, which is about half of the assessment fee. This building has no reserve funding in its assessments, so you will be surprised at the level of um, the assessments for something this great. Um, all units are large for the number of rooms. So a two bedroom will be larger than a two bedroom in other buildings because um, they've got just that much space. And believe it or not, it lives like a smaller building. They've got a lot of elevators, so you're not feeling like, oh my gosh, there are all these people going up and down all the time. And it has very wide hallways. You don't, you never feel like I'm in a huge building. Um, prices today range from un unbelievable. 649,900, um, so effectively 650, for a two bedroom, two bath on the 36th floor to 3.55 million for a three bedroom, three bath on 67. And the average price per square foot of recent sales was 558. Um, and I, I went across all sales just to give you a sense of how the building was done. And there weren't a ton of sales. There were only seven sales in the past year. Um, so what I've decided to do is show you two identically sized homes that are on the market today. So they are both um, three bedrooms, three baths, 2,700, a little over 2,700 square feet. The only difference are the views, condition, and floor height. So unit 6901 um, is on the market for almost uh, 2.4 million. And Note it's HOA, so it's on the 69th floor. It has an, um, its assessment is um, $1,695 a month. And um, its taxes are 25,000 and it's got, but it's got north and west exposures. When you're at the window, you'll see the lake, but you won't see the lake directly. And that's going to factor into, um, as we see, I believe the assessment. Um, it was rehabbed in 2018, and it was rehabbed in a very um, classical, transitional way. So look at the pretty ceilings, um, very, you know, very much the gray and the beautiful brown floor. So just done very elegantly. Um, I, this is their kitchen and the bedroom, very nice. But what you're seeing is actually not a lake view. Usually when I look out and I see that, I think, Oh my gosh, it's right across the lake and they're looking at the lake. Actually, that's a West View. Um, really? Oh yeah, I agree. That's funny. Okay. Because it's so high, it clears all the other buildings. So right. you look like you've got this big, open, and you do have this big open sky. So here's a floor plan of this unit, which is the same size, slightly different floor plan. And I didn't get a floor plan for the other one. They didn't provide it, but gives you a sense of um, how it's organized. So this is a corner unit with a lot of windows and um, laid out very nicely, a private yeah. room for the bedrooms, et cetera. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. So here's 3407, which is almost, which is 35 floors lower. And it has, has a price. <laughs> it, it has, it's a much lower price and it has a higher assessment. Oh yeah. yeah. And I think it's because of the view, because this has a south and west exposure. So it, what you'll yeah, see- view does count, sure. 
it does count but you'll see you are at on the 34th floor you're much more a part of the city mm -hmm. you can see you're looking into or at other buildings this is their view of the west side so this is um 111 uh east chestnut the claire um and then the um park hyatt so just you'll see other buildings um but you still get a lot of, that's your south view really okay. beautiful um but this is what you, you know this is why you're paying so much less right um, that's that maybe i don't think that's an original kitchen but it's really close if it isn't mm -hmm. um a huge bathroom but of an era that's passed and so that is what the t types of difference you'll get at water tower place now um they have some enormous homes the the, the most expensive house the most expensive apartments um have four to five thousand square feet so they are like a single family home but on one level with incredible views so square foot is pretty well it's pretty reasonable for for this kind of luxury sure uh I, well i have to say it looks like a very reasonably priced place with reasonable assessments and reasonable taxes um the last one was $2 million and its taxes were only 25,000, which I say 25,000, but it's only about 1% of value. So I always use the one and a half to 2% of value as my benchmark on taxes. So that wasn't yeah. too far off. It's, it's, yeah. it's, well, first of all, a couple of things. One, some of these big buildings are very good about working together to, um, to challenge and appeal taxes. They, mm -hmm. they appeal them for the building itself and they give you a sense of how to do it for yourselves if, if they don't help you do it to bring down the taxes as much as possible. There are a number of, of people who do not appeal their uh, tax assessments in buildings that are declining in value. So they end up continuing to pay all this tax that is not reflective of where sales are. And the assessor is not gonna do it for you. You have to be part of the process. Right. But Water right. Tower and probably One Mag Mile are the kinds of buildings that are very proactive. Absolutely. All right, so thank you. Learned a lot from that. Uh, today we talked about condo values and how floor height, view, condition affect your value in this in the building. And so thank you for watching. Uh, I don't know that we've picked our topic for next week, so we'll advertise that once we figure it out. But uh, it was wonderful seeing all of you today, and thank you for watching. Kyle, have a terrific week, and we'll see you again next time. Thank you for watching.